Join us as we break down the barriers where we will play whose timetable is it anyway. And in this special edition, we're going to explore the circumstances surrounding the botched May 2018 timetable implementation, starring Govia Thameslink, Network Rail, and the Department of Transport. In the last session, we explored the reasons behind the Thameslink Summer of Chaos. And in this segment, we will explore how synthetic timetable positions were created as a mere window dressing exercise. All of these changes culminated in a Summer of Chaos at Govia Thameslink. And you can see from these snippets, it is we the passengers that took the brunt of the chaos ensued. In my case, I remember attending a meeting on a Friday night at the end of June at St Pancras station. And I walked over to the Thameslink screens on the station and there were lots and lots of cancellations. I kept thinking to myself, this organisation really needs to recruit people who are capable of troubleshooting and fixing these problems. You see, the way I look at these issues is that they can be resolved. It is up to the organization's hierarchy to put in place quantify, quantifiable, meaningful actions to fix them. Being stuck on a train not knowing what is happening is one of the most frustrating aspects of being a rail commuter. Find out how rail signaling works by downloading our free guide where we will explain the causes of the delays in an easy to use guide. Download it for free right here. The next month, a number of jobs were advertised. This was in July on the Govia website and they were looking for trainee timetable planners. So I decided to apply for the position and the first stage was filling in an online application form. This was relatively straightforward. I received the following notification from them to confirm that my application had been submitted. A week or so later, I received an email to confirm that I had been shortlisted to attend an assessment day. And I had to schedule a day that I was free so that I could go there and complete my assessment. This is shown here. A few days later, I received my notification to confirm that my assessment day had been booked for the 20th of August, 2018 at the Govia headquarters in Croydon. This is the email. I attended the assessment day on the Monday and there are a group of six candidates. The day was hosted by a lady called Madeline and the assessment lasted for 
roughly 45 minutes in total. The first thing she stated was that the salary was £20,000 per year and that this was non-negotiable. We'll come back to this truth or lie later. I kept thinking to myself that this was a very unusual thing to say at the start of an assessment day. It was akin to being a 12 year old or in a classroom test and being told that you cannot ask for time for an extension when you're writing an exam. The assessment was divided into three sections. The first section included a series of timetables on the Great Northern Route. There are reams and reams of these timetables. And the objective was to find out how many train drivers or crew it would take to run the timetable. The process was extremely challenging and it had to be completed in 15 minutes. The next section was comprised of the following. Network Rail had made a number of changes to the timetable. In fact, they'd made nine changes. And how would this affect your answer to the previous question? And the final two questions were to do with a passenger journey, uh, passengers traveling from Sutton to Gatwick. And there were reams and reams of timetables that we had to use to work out what trains they needed to catch in order to get to Gatwick for a flight. I managed to get to the penultimate question towards the end, and we all had to explain our reasoning behind our answers. When I walked out of there, I was in a daze and I was just completely bewildered. I spoke to a lot of other candidates and most of them said that they couldn't even finish section one. I arrived home, and then I'll check the website once again to see if there are any other jobs Govio are offering. And I was completely flabbergasted to find that they had re-advertised the trainee timetable planner job for £25,000 a year. Recently, there was a letter that was sent to Modern Railways magazine complaining about the whole timetable fiasco and the salary of a timetable planner. It reads, I have read with interest the ongoing articles about Network Rail's inability to produce an on-time, robust timetable. What seems to be missing from all these articles is the derisory pay that Band 5 timetable planners are on 25K. Until this is up to a suitably higher rate, Network Rail will never retain its timetabling staff. Also, with all timetabling centralised at Milton Keynes, there will always be a limited pool of talent to fish from. Surely this should be part of Network Rail's devolved regions located near to the train operators. Please note that this is my own, this part is my own personal interpretation of what happened. Go via Thameslink. We don't want many people to proceed, so let's create a test that is virtually impossible to complete. We don't want to recruit anyone. Let's just waste their time. I realized there and then that something fishy or dishonest was happening and there and then right in front of my eyes, this happened. Mean, you know, this whole scenario of re-advertising the job. On the 28th of August, I received an email from Mandeling, once again inviting me to complete a test. This was after a period of two weeks. This, was, this test was a three hour test and consisted of three sets of numerical reasoning tests and just basic numerics. There were a set of verbal reasoning tests as well. And there was an Excel test. I really don't know that many people who put themselves through so much agony just to sit at a desk modeling timetables. I found the whole experience very disheartening. And I need to state that all of the emails that they sent to me were from a do not reply email inbox. This appears to be very contemptuous in my view. On the 11th of September, I received the following email regarding the timetabling planning position. It was a standard email of rejection, and I reckon 
that the fact that they had re-advertised the position for higher pay meant that I'd ruled myself out of the runnings. One of the major lessons learned in all of this is that it's important that you don't sell yourself and your skills short. I had no idea that they would increase the pay partway through the recruitment process. It's quite clear in my view that Govia did not treat the candidates with the respect that they deserve. And I strongly suspect that the entire exercise was a window dressing exercise in that they had to be seen to be at least attempting to do something during the summer 2018 timetable of chaos. Subscribe if you can and take a look at ormrepo.co.uk slash blogs for the latest news and views within the world of technology and transport.